Mountain Sledder Garage. Thanks for joining in on this episode. Today we're going to be talking about mountain snowmobile skis. I've been looking at forward to kind of making this video for over a year now and uh, it's been in the works. I just have never done it so I'm glad I'm finally getting around to it. This video is going to include all brands of two-stroke snowmobiles. Articat, Slash Yamaha, Polaris, and Skidoo. Axis, Matrix, um, G4 Skidoo, Proclimb, and Ascender. Uh, Yamaha and Articat. Everyone always asks, kind of, what's the best ski? What ski should I buy? What's, what's a better ski than stock? And I'll start by saying the three manufacturers right now make pretty good stock skis. It's hard to improve on them too much, but if you're going to improve on the stock ski for mountain riding, now we're talking deep powder, boondocking, tree riding. If you look on the internet and you ask that question on social media or one of the, or one of the uh, website channels, you're going to get 90% of people are going to recommend one of these three skis to replace your stock skis with. I've used all three of these skis on all three brands. All three of them are a better functioning ski than stock. They are, especially the SLP Mohawk and the Slide Dog Attack, a very aggressive ski. What I mean by an aggressive ski it's going to grip the snow really well. And, it, and your sled's going to go in the direction your ski want to go in. And what happens with the normal ski, like this Polaris ski, they're pretty smooth on the bottom and there isn't a lot of stuff to grab the snow with. And you remember, you have a 550 pound snowmobile ready to ride plus a 200 or 200 plus pound rider. That's a lot of weight. Plus you have this enormous track. When you're on the gas and you have that going, it's going to go want to go in the direction the track is going because there's all that weight on the track and the track has a huge, huge footprint. If you turn the skis, the track is still going to want to push that snowmobile straight, no matter where, whether you're on the trail or whether you're in the powder. And what I mean by an aggressive ski, a not very aggressive ski, like a lot of stock skis, will tend to push. The snowmobile will push it before it starts to turn. And that gives you a little bit of a cushion. An aggressive ski will bite into the snow really hard and, and turn your sled in the direction you're trying to turn it, and it won't push as much. So these two skis, the ATAC ski and the Mohawk ski, are very aggressive. And a lot of times when people first put these on, they're like, oh, I don't know if I like this ski. It, it's almost too much for me because their snowmobile doesn't push going into corners, and they're kind of used to having that little bit of cushion. So very aggressive skis. I really love them. And the first time, like I the first time when the Mohawk came out, five or six years ago when I first used it, oh God, I mean, my steering just seems so much different, but it's just because it was so aggressive. And then the ATAC came out a couple years after the Mohawk and it was the same way. So very aggressive skis for a very aggressive rider, backcountry riders. Well, let's start with probably the most popular backcountry ski. This is the only ski that's gonna, that I'm gonna feature here from a, one of the manufacturers. This is the Polaris Gripper Ski. It's probably been one of the favorite backcountry skis for all, to put on all three brands, whether you have a Polaris or an Articat or a Skidoo. When I first bought my 17 Skidoo Summit 850, this was the first thing I put on it was a pair of gripper skis, and it was a pretty big improvement over the stock skis. The other thing that we want to look at that I don't like about this ski, even it's the lightest weight ski, which is nice, but it's not made as heavy duty and it's not going to last as long as either one of these skis. These have more plastic molded into them, so they're going to be stiffer and they're going to last longer. These things, they wear, the plastic wears and gets chewed up a lot faster than either one of these skis. And these skis will wear out. I mean, I could chew up a pair of these skis in a year or two years where these skis are going to last a lot longer. I have a pair of ATAX on this players here and I've had those skis for this is the, almost the end of the third season and they've held up way better than any pair of grippers I've ever had but the other thing we have to remember about skis is I have a video about this in the Skidoo section and this is kind of what Skidoo changed on their expert model a few years ago and I experienced this same thing with an axis with the gripper ski on it a couple years ago if your ski rubber isn't tight and you have a lot of flop in your ski. This ski, let me show you on the, if you have a lot of flop, you see how much flop there is in this ski? A lot of movement up and down. And so what happens, I was riding through some deep powder once and my sled just felt like it was just working against something. I was having to give it a lot more throttle than I thought. I was side hilling through. It was pretty heavy, wet powder. And uh, what I was noticing is I thought my ski was coming up like this. And you see how far that ski tips up? 
if we look right here, this is almost a flat surface that the sled is pushing against. And that was stopping my snowmobile from moving through the snow as I side hilled on this side. So, and this has DuraPro ski rubbers in it, but look how loose they are. I would, I'm actually gonna work on maybe tighten these up. Actually with my ATAC skis, it actually tightens this up a lot, but um, this is something you really don't want on your mountain ski because you're gonna experience that where your ski gets up like this and the front part of that ski is almost straight up and down. And that's gonna act, act like a break when you're side hilling on this side. So you could be careful about that when you install your skis and your rubbers. Okay, so let's go through each one of these skis real quickly. We'll do some measurements on them. We'll weigh each one of them, and we'll kind of give you some numbers on each one of those. We'll start with the gripper ski. I'm gonna move these over a little bit. Now, it's kind of hard to measure length on each of these skis, and I'm gonna show you a little chart when we're done with this at the end. We're gonna start at the very tip of the ski here, and we're gonna measure all the way to the very tail of the ski. Gripper ski is about 43 inches long, and if I measure this as, equally as I can from side to side. The gripper ski is about three and five eighths inches wide. So three and five eighths wide, it's actually the narrowest of these three skis. So the last thing we're gonna do with this ski is we're gonna weigh it. Like I said before, the gripper ski is actually the lightest ski by a couple of pounds. Now every ski that I weigh, we're gonna, we have the rubber in and the hardware to attach it. So it's a complete ski. All of them have the carbide on it. Fully functional ski, the way you would attach it to your sled. We look at this, six pounds, three ounces, which is a pretty light ski if you've ever weighed skis before. Okay, so let's go on before we measure the other ones, let's uh, weigh these other ones. So that was the gripper ski. Let's go on to the Mohawk, we'll weigh it. Seven pounds, 11 ounces, so a little bit, about a pound more, pound and a half more than the gripper ski. The ATAC ski, and we got about eight pounds, eight pounds, four ounces. So the heaviest ski, but this also has the most plastic molded into it. If you can see this, it's fully encased here. So you'll probably have less snow and ice buildup on this ski than you will on this ski that has these huge holes in here for snow and ice to build up on. So um, it, although it is lighter to start with, it'll probably end up weighing about the same once you get the snow and ice built up on this gripper ski. Well, let's go ahead and we'll measure these other two. From the tip of the plastic ski tip on this to the back, about 41 and a half inches. The thing about the Mohawk ski, it actually is the widest ski of all of them. So we got about seven and a quarter inches wide. That's a pretty wide ski. Now, if we go and we measure our last ski width, the ATAC ski, we come in at just at seven inches. So we got six and five eighths inches wide for the gripper ski, seven and a quarter inches wide for the Mohawk ski, seven inches wide for the ATAC ski. Now let's just measure the length of the ATAC ski. It's actually the longest ski. And we're gonna start at the tip here, go all the way back to the tail, a little over 44 inches. They're all just a little bit different as far as lengths, widths, and weights. The width of the ski is also going to give it its flotation. So when you count length and width, you're definitely by far gonna have more flotation with these two than this one, because just they both just have more surface area on them. Uh, the tops of these skis are all pretty similar. You know, they call this the gripper ski because it's got all these little teeny nubs when you walk on this, when you're moving around in deep snow, if you don't want to seek in the snow, you step on here. It's got a ton. It was the first ski to do this, to put the nubs on it for grippers. And it's got a lot of really nice grippers. That's why it's called the gripper ski. Um, when the Mohawk came out five or six years ago, it did the same thing. It's got a lot of really nice little grips on the side. And the ATAC skis also got some aggressive Not as the other skis, but it still got them. Um, now the ATAC, they all have uh, similar handles. There's no, no big deal on the handles. One of those things you're gonna push on. The ATAC this year did come out with a new handle. This has been their old handle for a number of years. It's got these little finger slots in it here and it's curved shaped, uh, more rounded. The new handle looks like this. It's a little bit stiffer handle, doesn't flex near as much as the old one. And it's just uh, a little bit more ergonomic than the old handle was. So you're gonna get a new handle if you order the ATACs this year. 
than if you got them the previous years. Now, if we turn all these over, there's a number of differences on the bottom of these skis that we're gonna wanna look at. Okay, first we're gonna look at the gripper ski and we're gonna measure the one thing that you have, see how this is a completely flat surface? There's not a lot of ridges or things on this ski to catch it as you push it through the snow, like I said, when you're trying to turn. And so this is probably gonna be the loosest ski, the ski that'll probably push the most, much less aggressive than the other two, and I'll show you those in a minute. The other thing we measure on skis is the keel height. So the, sur the measurement from the surface here to the soft top of this plastic. So the keel height on this ski, the gripper ski, is about an inch and a half. That's a pretty deep keel. So that's the gripper ski. Real smooth bottom, um, square keel here with about an inch and a half of depth. The other thing we want to look at is the end of this ski. It's tapered up a teeny bit, but not very much. And then it's also tapered this way just a little bit, um, but not a ton. The other skis are a little bit different in that regard. So let's look at the other two. Come over here to the Mohawk ski. Let's measure its keel. So its keel is just barely over an inch, about an inch and an eighth. But it's also got a different shape to its keel. If you may not be able to see this, they call it the hourglass keel. You see it's thicker here, thinner here, and then thicker here at the back. That's to help it grip the snow a little bit better, be a little bit more aggressive. So it's got that hourglass keel. It's the deepest part of this is right here, an inch and an eighth. But it's also got these other two smaller keels on the outside. If you remember the olden days, the Simmons ski that had the carbides both on the outside, that's kind of what they tried to initiate here. So when you're side hilling in the snow, you not only got the center keel that's keeping you on the side hill, but you also got this side keel and that makes it really nice for gripping the snow and uh, keeping this snowmobile on edge, which the gripper ski is so smooth, it's not gonna hold an edge near as well as either one of these two skis. So if we go over to the ATAC ski, we're gonna measure its keel, and it is about an inch and a quarter. Now, the interesting thing about the keel on this, both the Polaris ski, this one, and the Mohawk ski, this one, the keel is square. It's 90 degrees from there to there, 90 degrees over all the way across the top. If you can see this, they call this a reverse keel design, or it's almost like a triangular design the keel is. If you can see that, it's angled here. It's not straight up and down. That's really, when you're side hilling on this, it's really digging into the mountain. And it's also kind of got this smaller side keel here, kind of like the Mohawk ski has. That's what really gives this ski a real aggressive hookup when you're on it. Now, the third thing this ski has, it's got this channel here. It's called, they call it the snow induction channel. Supposedly what that does, when you get the snow coming through here, it gets into this channel here, packs in here, and grips the center part of this really well between here and here. And it gives you a really aggressive bite when you're side healing. So a really nice feature of the ATAC ski is that reverse keel plus the snow induction part. Now the last thing we'll show you on these, I showed you on the Polaris ski. This one's tapered a little bit more here. It's only tapered up a teeny bit on the back edge. Whereas we look at the ATAC ski, the ATAC ski is very tapered from here down to here. It tapers from seven inches down to almost three inches down here. And then the other thing it has, this tapers up three inches from horizontal tapers up. So when you have your snowmobile in reverse, a lot of times if this was flat, you you, oh, you'll have the bow bottom of your ski dig into the snow and you'll get stuck in reverse. What this does, this keeps the backside of the ski when you're in reverse, keeps this from digging into snow and helps you stay on top of the snow when you're reversing. So another really nice feature of the ATAC ski. Okay, now I've made this different chart for our skis. Each ski on the different measurements we took and then some of the other features like colors. Um, we'll start with the gripper ski, six pounds, two ounces roughly. It was the narrowest ski. It was middle of the road as far as length goes at 43 inches. Now, I don't know how many colors the ski part of this comes in. I know I've seen three, red, black, and white. I don't know if it comes in what other colors other than that, but those are the ones I've seen. I know there's a few different loop colors. Uh, I know I have black and lime squeeze, I mean, there's probably a couple other colors than that, that's why there's a question mark there. So not very many colors. It's the lightest ski, that's the main thing 
the gripper has going for it is by, it's by far, it's by far the lightest at just over six pounds complete. But it's middle of the road in length, it's the narrowest, has the smallest amount of surface area, has the fewest amount of colors. It's got a completely flat bottom. It does have a square keel like this, and the keel is fairly deep. It's a nice keel, one and a quarter inches. I think that's what gives it its nice aggressive feel. And but it only comes in solid colors. So that's the gripper ski. We go down to the Mohawk ski, a little bit more than a pound more than the gripper ski at seven pounds, six ounces. It is the widest ski, so the most, probably almost the most surface area, even though it is the shortest at 41 inches, but it is the widest at seven uh, inches and a quarter. Uh, if you look in their um, brochure that I got at the snow show, it comes in seven colors for the ski. Uh, there's 11 different colors for the loops, which isn't bad, but they only come in solid colors. There's no color combinations with these. You can only get it in, each of these things only come in one color. Um, you can't get custom skis like you can the ATAC ski. It's got the smallest keel at 1.8 inches deep, but remember it's got those that tri-keel design there, so it's it, a little bit of a keel on the outside. It's also a square keel, 90 degrees on each keel, but that triple keel design gives it a very aggressive uh, feel for it, much more aggressive feeling than other stock skis, especially the gripper ski. That tri-keel really is nice feature and the width of it, those two things combined make it a really aggressive ski and a really nice mountain ski. Okay, so the last ski, the Slide Dog Attack, the Mo well, let's say the Mohawk skis, I think been out five or six years. Its predecessor was the Powder Pro Ski and then they redesigned it into the Mohawk. And the last ski, it came out I think three years ago, the ATAC ski. One thing you have to remember, if you had an early ATAC ski the first year, they had a problem the first year of the rubber sp spitting out. They since then have redesigned the rubbers last year and also they redesigned the mount here where it mounts through the ski. And since they've done that, I haven't had any problems losing the rubbers on this ski. Uh, the first year I had a lot of problems spitting my rubbers out of this ski, but since they've redesigned all this, it's been really nice and really consistent in keeping the rubber in. ATAC ski, unfortunately the heaviest ski, it's my favorite ski, that's the biggest downside to it. It's a little bit more than a half a pound more than the Mohawk, almost two pounds more than the Gripper. Middle of the road when it comes to width at seven inches, still pretty wide, but it is the longest ski at 44 inches. When you do the math there, surface area, Mohawk probably has a teeny bit more surface area, but they're pretty dang close surface area both. The thing where you really, really benefit from the ATAC ski is three things. Colors of the skis themselves, and loop colors. There's 19 different colors and every color you can think of for every snowmobile, lime squeeze, two or three different shades of blue, two or three or four different shades of green, four or five different shades of this and that. And they have every color you can imagine for ski for Polaris and for Articat, every color that you would ever want for any of those models, they have it, which is super nice. If you have a wrap and you want something cool that's gonna match your wrap, there's really no other ski to get, in my opinion, than the ATAC, because it really is, in my opinion, the best performing ski on the market right now, very close to the Mohawk. I mean, you're splitting hairs there as far as performance. Those two are my favorite go-to skis, the Mohawk and the ATAC ski for a mountain ski. A close second is the Gripper. One of those two skis, if you're gonna pick a ski, Mohawk or ATAC for a mountain ski, you really can't go wrong. And if you really want to save some money, you want to find a set of used grippers, money is an issue for you if you just want the performance. A gripper is a really nice ski. But let's go back to colors. So 19 different colors, combinations on the ski loops themselves, the handles or the skis themselves. But also you can get this in three different color combinations. You can get solid color. You can get this one, which is called swirl. So you can get two different colors mixed in this. Or you can get this one, which is called Urban Camo, which has three different colors in it. And if you combine all of these color combinations, you have over 3,000 different color combinations you can do with these skis. If you combine the different colors of ski loops, the three different colors you can put on this ski, the two different colors you can put on the other ski, plus the combinations of ski loops. I mean, you have so many color combinations available. There's nothing else that even comes close to this ski in, I'm gonna say cool factor because I had these skis custom made to match my Laris Boost. Hopefully it will get here next week and I'll put these skis on it. This ski right here, 
goes on and matches my wrap I have on my 2020 and a half Skidoo Turbo. It's got the lava red ski handle that matches the lava red um, spindle and the lava red uh, handlebars. I think the only reason you maybe wouldn't want to use this ski, if you were doing the ultra lightest build snowmobile you could build, then you'd probably want to use a gripper ski, even though um, this ski is a better performing ski and the colors are more amazing. So there we go for our skis. I hope you can make a good choice when you're picking aftermarket skis. Like I said, my number one go-to ski now is the ATAC. It used to be the Mohawk, but you really can't, like I said, can't go wrong with either. Can't really go wrong if performance rise with either of these three, but the color combinations, if you're ordering a new ski and the performance of the ATAC ski just can't be beat by anything in my opinion. So there you have it. I uh, hope that helps you make your decisions on your skis this year on your mountain sleds. Now there's gonna be people that say, what about this ski or that ski? But I just say these are the three go-to skis that 90% of mountain riders are probably going to use. There's a few other mountain skis out there from smaller companies. I've used some of them. I'm not going to mention them because some of them are pretty crappy and maybe not really any better than some of the old Articat skis. So these are the only three I'm going to mention and that I think are worth mentioning if you're going to spend your money on something. So I hope uh, this helps with your ski choice in the future. And as some new ski comes out, we'll review it too. And uh, be safe out there on the mountain and subscribe to the channel. There's a little red subscribe button here on YouTube. Um, share the videos, like the videos when you see them, share them with your friends and on social media websites. And uh, we'll see you next time on Mountain Slaughter Garage. Mm -hmm.